When I first started as a financial advisor a little over 20 years ago, one of the more common questions I'd be asked is, hey, Asul, how long does it take to save a million dollars? What do I need to do to reach that benchmark? But you know what? Because of inflation, a million dollars isn't what it used to be. And now a much more common question is, hey, Asul, what do I need to do to save $2 million? So in today's video, I'm gonna shed some light on that for you. And really it's, it's the, the premise of the video is, let's say you're making $100,000 a year. How much do you need to save? And for how long do you need to save that to get to a million dollars? But yeah, I don't want you to put too much credence into the, I'm making $100,000, because that's a, that's a nice salary here in the United States. And even people that are making $100,000 a year, surprisingly, over half of them are not saving a dime. I mean, to me, that's ludicrous. That's absolute, absolutely crazy that people making a, over $100,000 a year are not saving anything. I don't want that to be you. On the other hand, as you'll see, as we go through these numbers, you can very really quickly get into the range where you're, you're saving all your money and you're not enjoying any of it. So it's a balancing act. So, so let's jump in. What does it take to save $100,000? Now, really, it depends on how long you have. If if you have a long period of time, you can save a little bit less. So let me tell you what the assumptions are here. The assumptions are you're starting off with zero. The, the goal is, again, to get to $2 million. The return on investment is 6%. You can follow along to this chart here. Um, I built this chart, uh, so no credit necessary. Uh, and, and inflation is 2%, and that inflation number is gonna come in later. Okay, so if you have a long period of time, let's say you have 50 years, five zero years, on an annual basis, you have to save a little less than $7,000 a year. And on a monthly basis, about $575 a year. You do that for 50 years, five zero years. And the good news is at 6% a year, you're gonna end up with $2 million. Now, if you have 45 years to save, you're gonna have to save more, actually quite a bit more. You're gonna to have to save 9,000, a little over $9,400. And so you can see that's, you know, about 25, 30% more, even though it's just five years less. And the reason is those last five years really give you a lot of power, really give you a lot of oomph to your savings because now your, your money that you saved early on, those last five years, are really working hard for you in those last five years. You don't have that. So now you're saving a little less than $800 a month. What if you have 40 years? In this case, you're saving a little over $1,000 a month. You're saving just under $13,000. Again, a little over $1,000 a month. If you have 35 years, now you're going to have to save almost 50% more than if, if, if you only had 40 years. So if you have 35 years, you're gonna to have to save almost $18,000 a year, which is $1,500 a month. Now, as we get shorter in periods of time, you're gonna see you've gotta start saving a lot. A lot, Even if you're making $100,000, you're, you're saving a big portion of your, after, certainly your after-tax income for your savings goals. So if you have 30 years to save, you're gonna be saving a little over $25,000 a year, and, and that's gonna be a little over $2,000 a month. If you have 25 years now, you're almost saving 40% of your gross pre-tax dollars. You're saving $36,000 or a little over $3,000 a month. If you only have 20 years, now you're looking at saving almost 50% more than what you were if you had 25 years. So again, each of these incremental years is, has quite an impact. So in at 20 years, you're saving almost $55,000, almost 60% of your pre-tax money or a little over $4,500. Now, you can see in, the, in these common uh, sections, if you have 15 years and 10 years to save $2 million, you better be making more than $100,000 a year because you're gonna be saving almost all of your salary. For 15 years, you're saving a little less, you have to save a little less than $86,000 a year I don't know anybody that can do that because your tax bill is probably going to be your 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 net pays going to be less than eighty six thousand dollars a year. So you're saving a little over seven thousand dollars. Then if you're trying to do this in ten years, you better be making a nice salary because 
you have to save a little over $150,000 a year or $12,645 a month. So you can see the impact of time and why time is so important. And let me use this chart here that, that shows how long it takes to save your first $100,000. Now, this is saying that you're saving $10,000 a year. You're, you're getting a slightly higher return. In my example, it's it was 6%. In this example, it's you're getting 7% on it. And you can see it takes a little less than eight years, 7.8 years to save your first $100,000. But look at what happens between $900,000 and a million dollars. In that case, it just takes a little over a year to save $100,000. So why is that? Well, the difference between $900,000 and a million is still in aggregate $100,000. But in that case, you have $900,000 behind you working as hard for you as you did for it. So that's why it takes about a fourth as long to earn that extra incremental $100,000. So that's why you saw these big jumps. You know, you, you have five years left to save. It's not the initial years that are really helping you out. It's not years zero through five, but it's years 25 through 30. It's years 15 through 20. It's years 10 through 15. It's those last five years where somebody has that base and that really just powers them up. Now, you know, my goal is to help you make good decisions. If you have 10 years left until you're hoping to retire and you haven't saved anything, do I think you should be saving 85% uh, of your gross pay? I don't because it's also about enjoying the journey, right? So my channel is really about giving you the information you need to make a good decision. And here's what I want to share with you. So I just shared how long it takes to get to a million dollars, but here's what a lot of finance YouTubers aren't going to show you that I think is really important. And that is this hidden column here. Let's look at this. The what I call the feels like column. So the good news is if you have 50 years to save, you only have to save a little over uh, $550 a month to get to $2 million, but that's $2 million in 50 years. What does that feel like today? That's what this feels like column is. That only feels like $750,000. So it's not like, you know, you're living large on $2 million. It's you're gonna be living on in today's dollars $750,000 and that's why in my spreadsheet I have inflation because that's we're bringing that that value back into today's dollars and that's at only 2% inflation if inflation is 3% those numbers are going to be quite a bit different again $750,000 at 2% uh, inflation but what at 3% I just happen to have the spreadsheet in front of me and that drops it down to $450,000. So it takes away the value by about a third at, at the end. So I'm going to move this back to 2% and, and look at the numbers. Let me give you another one. Let's say that you have 30 years to save $2 million. And as a reminder, we were saving $2,100 a month, a little over $25,000 a year. The good news is, um, you do, you do have $2 million in 30 years. The bad news is it's only going to feel like $1.1 million. In fact, you can see here at, at 35 years, you're, you're saving $1,500 a month. You have $2 million in absolute dollars. But here you can see it really feels like a million dollars, which is still a great goal, right? Fewer than 10% of all retirees in today's world retire with more than a million dollars in retirement savings. So it's still a great goal, but I want you to know it's not going to feel like you have $2 million in today's dollars. I also want you to know, I think this goal of saving $2 million and starting from zero and being able to get there in 10 or 15 years, which is kind of the whole fire movement, right? The financially independent retire early folks that are in their early twenties and saying, I, you know, I want to be financially independent by the time I'm 30 or 35 years old. I, I applaud the idea behind that to get your financial independence because money is a terrible reason to be doing what you're doing for a living. I want you doing what you're doing for a living because it's your passion. It's your way of giving back to, to society. It is your highest and best use. And I, I feel myself as a retirement 
advisor. That's Asul's highest and best use. And I want you to find your highest and best use. So I applaud the idea behind financial, being financially independent early, the FIRE movement. But I think you have to sacrifice too much along the way. I think you want to enjoy the journey as well. And that's what this video is up here. It's seven things that I want you to think about stop doing in your 50s and 60s in order to enjoy the journey until you get to retire. So I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.